morning, citizens, and thanks for tuning in to episode 66 of the Nindy Nation podcast. If this is your first time joining us, welcome, and thanks for stopping by. Nindy Nation is your one-stop shop for everything independently developed for the Nintendo Switch. Each week, we take a quick look at every new indie game hitting the eShop, and then in our second half, we'll scour Nintendo's digital storefront and find the week's best deals so you can stretch your digital dollar further and keep your Joy-Cons synced. New episodes of Nindy Nation post Sunday evening to podcast feeds thanks to our friends at the Nintendo Village. And on Monday, you can find a video version on the Nindy Nation YouTube channel, complete with footage of every game we cover. This week on YouTube, we'll have a new Let's Play for What the Golf, and the next Nindies We Love episode is right around the corner, so don't forget to subscribe. For up-to-the-minute deals and general indie game shenanigans, find us on Twitter at Nindy Nation and let us know what titles you're picking up. This week, we're covering releases and deals for May 23rd through the 29th, but as you know, there's always a few games that slip through the cracks, hitting the eShop with little to no fanfare at all. So let's kick off this week by checking out the neglected Nindies released since episode 65. On May 21st, one of the more popular Nightmare Fuel generators saw a new release with Steel Wool Studios releasing Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted for $29.99. This is actually a collection of minigames based on all five episodes from the beloved Scream Factory with scenes remade and compiled to tell an all-new terrifying story within the world that I will never explore because I'm a big baby. The same day, developer Koa Labs... Koala... Oh, I get it, like Koala Labs. Anyways, Koa Labs released Luxor for $7.99 and included zero screenshots or footage of their game, only stating that you control a newborn alien that must survive various trials but fails to mention anything else about their game. Great job, team. And, uh, that's it. That's really it. Everyone's on top of things for once. Only two games. I I don't really know what to say. I guess I guess we'll get to this week's new releases. Here are the new Nindies hitting the eShop from May 22nd through May 29th. With an admittedly quiet start to the week, on May 27th, Ultimate Games kicks things off by porting the mobile game ailment to the Switch for $7.99. It looks like your standard pixel art twin-stick shooter, but with a bit more story and adventure. I just wish when they ported these mobile games, they would update the interface so it wasn't so obvious that, Hey! This is how you play this game for free on an iPhone! You know? Also on the 27th, the illustrious Adam Nickerson of Ding Dong XL and Super Bit Blaster XL fame has released his third game for the Switch in partnership with Atari, Missile Command Recharged, for $2.99. Now, this is a free-to-play game on mobile, but with the style of gameplay here, I think 3 bucks is perfectly reasonable to unlock everything. And when I was playing it on my phone, I was constantly wishing I had a controller, so I do think this is a great fit for the Switch. It's Missile Command, but it has a dynamic difficulty and a roguelike upgrade system. Throw in Adam's typical neon art style and earworm music, and Missile Command Recharged is an easy recommendation. My suggestion? Download it on your phone, treat that like a demo to see what you're getting, and then if you like it, go buy it on the Switch. Moving ahead to the 28th, which is next week's big Thursday drop, we start with Synaptic Drive by Yunuo Games and Thousand Games. This is a sci-fi arena brawler with tons of modes and loadouts that can affect your strategy and the layout of each arena. There's a lot going on here and the graphics look stellar, but an online game coming in at 30 bucks is a tough sell, so I'm going to say wait and see on Synaptic Drive. Playdigis is back with a fun twist on the resource management sim with Turmoil by Gamius for $14.99. Turmoil puts you in the 19th century American oil rush as a baron searching for black gold. You'll plot land, strategically place oil fields, and work to become the king you were always meant to be. It seems to play a lot like a board game, but considering this is single player only, maybe not. Fly Punch Boom looks like an absolute mess, but messes can be fun, and so could this 1-4 player fighting game from Jolly Punch Games. With an animation style similar to what you'd see on Adult Swim, that super expressive but kinda gross style, you know what I mean? Is there a term for that? Anyways, there's a ton of characters, a ton of stages, everything looks completely outrageous, and the soundtrack is pretty great. We'll see if I can nab some of the music for our intro. 
I'll bet this one would be a blast to play online with your friends while you're hanging out on voice chat together, and it has a demo so you can check it out for yourself before you decide to plop down $12.74. I love building the released list for the week and finding cool new games that I can't wait to play for myself. You probably know that I love a good genre-blending indie game, and that's exactly what we've got with Atomicrops by Birdbath Games and Raw Thrills. Similar to how Moonlighter blends dungeon crawling and shop management, Atomicrops blends twin-stick shooting and... farming. As the owner of the last functional farm in the post-apocalypse, you spend your days looting nearby areas for seed and then planting, farming, and harvesting your crops for the city. In the evening, your farm is invaded by post-apocalyptic monsters and you must fight them off in a combination of tower defense and twin-stick shooting. I don't know about you, but this game sounds awesome to me. At $14.99, I'm placing Atomicrops right near the top of the list for Nindy Nation Pick of the Week. The next release is another big one, and I've seen almost zero coverage of it for the Switch, so sit back because we're going to take a minute on this one. Get ready, citizens, because if you're excited about that new Paper Mario announcement, I've got just the game for you. Especially if you're cautiously optimistic about Paper Mario the Origami King and really hoping that it stays closer to the older Paper Mario games like the Thousand Year Door more so than the newer ones. That's right, I'm talking about Bug Fables The Everlasting Sampling, developed by Moonsprout Games and published by Dangan Entertainment. Releasing on the 28th for $24.99, you're definitely getting your money's worth out of this one. Bug Fables follows the story of three bugs living in Bulgaria who go on an adventure searching for treasure and the titular Everlasting Sapling, which grants immortality. If you're watching the video on the Nindy Nation YouTube channel, you can already see how great this game looks, but if not, Bug Fables employs a flat, paper-like art style with bold and bright colors set across environments that blend 2D movement within a pseudo-3D world. Characters in your party learn various abilities that not only help in combat, but also assist with solving puzzles and traversing simple platforming segments. Now, as Bug Fables is an adventure RPG, combat is half of the game, and in Bug Fables, it is turn-based with action mechanics that will have you timing button prompts to turn the tide of battle, just like in the first couple Paper Mario games. If you can't tell, I think Bug Fables is wonderful, and I've had a ton of fun with this game ever since it released on Steam Early Access over a year ago, but the Switch is definitely the perfect place to play this 40-ish hour RPG. If you're an RPG fan of any sort, or if you've enjoyed the Paper Mario titles, you owe it to yourself to pick up Bug Fables, which is also in the running for Nindy Nation Pick of the Week. Next up is a free-to-play mobile port developed by InLogic and published by Eleven Sheep. Hill Climbing Mania is basically a side-scrolling endless runner which uses that super cheap-looking art style that plagues so much of the mobile gaming scene. You drive up and down hills collecting coins, and if this game was 99 cents, I'd actually recommend it for kids. I know my two-year-old son loves messing around with this kind of game. But, unfortunately, the Switch tax strikes again, and you'll have to wait for this game to inevitably go on some ridiculous penny or nine cent sale, because if you want to climb hills maniacally right now, it's going to set you back six bucks. Sodesco is a mostly lackluster publisher with a couple of titles that are a bit above average, like Toki Tori, Tricky Towers, and Earthlock, and the release this week could be added to that list. Adam's Venture Origins sets its sights pretty high, and one of the few times that I think the phrase, it looks pretty good for an indie, actually applies. That's because Adam's Venture is a Tomb Raider or Uncharted-type third-person adventure that takes place in the Roaring Twenties. I'm not seeing any combat, so I think it's mostly exploring, narrative, and puzzle solving, but what's here does look really cool. Reviews are definitely on the mediocre side, but from what I've read, they state mostly that there's a good amount to like, just not for the price. And I can certainly understand that, because launching at $40, if you're interested, you might want to put this one on the back burner and wait for a discount. And we're wrapping up the big Thursday drop on May 28th with two more excellent titles. I say this a lot, but is this the best release week ever? It might be. 
Resolution, with two eyes, is the first release by developer Monolith of Minds, and it's a great first impression alongside publisher Deck 13. You gotta see video for this one because of the dark sci-fi visual style that's very striking and reminiscent of the excellent work from games like Hyperlight Drifter. Monolith of Minds also makes a great first impression because of how well they describe their game, which, admittedly, is a shame to be such a unique trait. <laughs> Here's how they describe Resolution. Resolution is a fast-paced action adventure created by two angry German brothers leading a band of vagrants who loaded it with lovely pixels, dirty jokes, deep ideas, and badass emotional tunes for 20 hours of punishing combat, rewarding exploration, and layered storytelling. Resolution is yet another title at 1999 that's earning a spot among Nindy Nation's picks of this week. However, seeing as this podcast is a one-man show, and it ultimately comes down to my decision, I'm probably gonna have to give the pick of the week to this next and final title to release on May 28th. The sequel to one of my favorite Nindies, releasing by one of THE preeminent indie developers for $29.99 is Way Forward's Shantae and the Seven Sirens, the sequel to 2017's Half Genie Hero. If you haven't played a Shantae title, now is the perfect time to jump in. Dating all the way back to the Game Boy Color, this series looks like a Saturday morning cartoon with hand-drawn 2D visuals, an open and interconnected world to explore, and airtight platforming mechanics. Shantae will explore, meet tons of wonderfully voice-acted characters, and learn all kinds of shape-shifting and magical abilities that allow new paths to be opened in previously explored areas. This is the fifth outing for Shantae, and for the last two more modern entries, WayForward has supported their games endlessly with both free and paid DLC that add entirely new modes to the game among many other features. That's why the previous Half Genie Hero was featured in the Nindies We Love episode about games that keep on giving through free updates, and also just one of the many reasons why Shantae and the Seven Sirens earns Nindy Nation's highest recommendation and over overall pick of the week. Would you believe me if I told you that we still have six more games releasing on Friday the 29th? Does anybody have any money left after that Thursday drop? Let's see what else is coming to empty out your digital wallet. Starting with Genetic Disaster, which, other than being a name my mother has given me, is a twin-stick shooter with procedurally generated levels about bizarre, mutated creatures escaping a lab by shooting their way out. Dragius Games leans pretty heavily into recommending this as a co-op experience, but you can certainly blast your way through the 12 stages by yourself, too. Along the way, you'll gather any number of the 70-plus weapons and be mutated by over 50 genetic, uh, disasters. This is one of the best-looking releases I've ever seen from Dragius Games and certainly looks like it's worth checking out, even at its launch price of $14.99. Flux 8 is a quirky little puzzle platformer with a primary mechanic focused around magnets, so as you work to avoid the obstacles in your way, you will attract and repel your way to the goal. Developer Torchbearer has included two-player co-op throughout and a fun, upbeat soundtrack to go along with the neon line art that makes up this new puzzle platformer you can check out for the odd launch price of $9.19. What's up with that? Another release by a typically lackluster publisher that seems to be bucking the trend this week. Wait, are these publishers finally paying attention to the fact that quality might actually matter? That seems to be the case with John Dusoff's new $13 release, Indiecopolis. Indiepocalypse. Indiecolypse. Indiecalypse? I think it's Indiecalypse. $13 release, Indiecalypse, which puts you in the shoes of three indie developers hell-bent on making the best indie ever. Apparently, that is done by completing over 20 minigames that take heavy inspiration from other notable indies. I see bosses that look straight out of Cuphead, twin-stick shooting that is nearly identical to Enter the Gungeon, fighting games that mimic Punch-Out or Street Fighter, and even a restaurant simulator. I guess it all comes down to how fun and replayable these minigames actually are, but the art style is attractive and the dark, somewhat mature humor is a nice touch. Color me intrigued to learn more about Indiecalypse. Super Power Up Games is back this week with a cheap, solid racing game for $7.99 called Wild Tracks Racing. It's an ATV game, so expect a bunch of jumps, lots of dirt, and an arcade racing experience for up to four players. 
Ultimate Games has another on deck to round out the week, developed by Toucan Games and releasing for $9.90, that's another weird price, is Climb Bros, and it looks pretty cool. It's a side-scrolling, pixelated co-op game for up to four players that will see you climbing mountains, hot air balloons, and all kinds of interesting areas. You and your partners are tethered together, which creates a yo-yo-like mechanic that I can't say I've seen since the 32X game Knuckles Chaotix. Anyone else remember that game? You have access to grappling hooks and a bunch of other stuff to help you scale, uh, whatever, and it looks like a pretty fun way to engage in some cooperative competition. I'd say wait for a sale, though, because Ultimate Games always drops their prices very quickly. And finally, developed and published by Kill Monday Games, shout out to that name, by the way, and releasing for $19.99 is Little Miss Fortune, which is a narrative adventure game with two very different tones that shift between overly cheerful and decidedly dark. This is another one where I just gotta read off the developer's bullet points, which I think will get this game's tone and focus across. You may pet a doggy, a fishy, a wolfy, the kraken, the kitty, and the foxy. Visit a pet cemetery with a shovel. Now with real human voices, hear Miss Fortune say some pretty cute things. Missing children. There's a monster. Fall in love. Commit petty crimes. Right? It's weird, but in a good way? Question mark? What a week. If you're following me on Twitter, and you should at Nindy Nation, you may have seen my gushing post about just how incredible this week is. Is it hyperbole for me to say this is the best week ever? Let me know what you think. In terms of just high quality, varied genre releases, we've got Shantae, Genetic Disaster, Atomic Crops, Resolution, Bug Fables. I think a lot of us are just going to go broke this week. But if you're not looking to splurge this week, that's okay too. As always, we've scoured the list of currently 581 games on sale over on the eShop, and here are our picks for the best deals of May 22nd through the 29th. Ghost 1.0 is an older game that I've recently been playing and will definitely have in an upcoming Nindies We Love video. It's a sci-fi exploration platformer, otherwise known as a Metroidvania, with some of the best voice acting and humor I've heard in an indie. And that's all very welcome with a story that I'm still seeing unravel and very interested in. What's more is that in addition to a traditional Metroidvania adventure, you can also play the game as a roguelike in a completely different mode, where death is permanent but power-ups are more frequent, the difficulty constantly ramps, and the world itself is randomized on every playthrough. Seriously, it's like two games in one. Check this one out. It's great, and right now, it's 60% off for only $3.99. The Escapists Complete Edition is 80% off for only $2.99 to fulfill your lighthearted fantasies of breaking out of prison, and it's a lot of fun. The Complete Edition comes with all four DLC packs, including the one that's exclusive to the Switch, too. If you're interested in seeing the origins of terrible full-motion video games, two of the most notable from the Sega CD have their Switch re-releases currently on sale. Both Double Switch and the controversial, quote-unquote controversial, Night Trap are 90% off for a buck 49 each. Be warned, these games are in fact terrible, but they're the kind of terrible that's so terrible that they're hilarious. If you're into bad B-movies, you should check these out. Ukulele and the Impossible Lair is back on sale, which doesn't happen too often. As one of the most polished side-scrolling platformers this side of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, they throw in a huge 3D overworld that connects the levels in a way that I now think every game in this genre should steal. You can pick up this beautiful platformer while it's 33% off for 20 bucks. The Way Remastered is one of the better puzzle platformers with an interesting story, and the remaster makes the sci-fi world really stand out on the Switch's handheld screen. You can pick it up right now for 93% off at only 99 cents. Cave Story started out as an old Flash game dating back almost 20 years ago, and it's seen a dozen remakes and revisions since then. But the ultimate version of this action platformer is exclusive to the Switch and is an incredible game if you've never played it. One of the few that rarely sees a discount, it's currently half off for $14.99. So if you're looking for a game that has it all, great mechanics, a deep narrative, and 
pixel perfect platforming, go pick up Cave Story Plus and you will not be disappointed. If you remember stealth ninja games like Tenchu fondly and you haven't played Aragami Shadow Edition, now is the perfect time to jump in. This game is gorgeous and one of the few stealth action games that really nails the feeling of hiding in the shadows and makes it so, so gratifying to take out an unsuspecting enemy. Aragami is also half off for 15 bucks. I've recommended Battle Princess Madeline a couple of times in the past, but right now, until May 29th, it's at its lowest price ever with a 75% discount for 5 bucks, and is a wonderful side-scrolling 16-bit action game with a lot of similarities to the Ghost and Goblins series. This is a great title that anyone up for a challenge should definitely check out. Sparklight, a title featured in our most recent Nindies We Love video, is a top-down action-adventure that plays like a roguelike version of Legend of Zelda, and I loved every minute of this adventure. This is one of the best executions of this style of game on the Switch, and it's currently 40% off for $14.99, which is also the price that I paid for it, and I feel like I got every penny out of it. And finally, I have to mention Valfaris because it's a pricier Nindy, but an awesome game, and it's also at its lowest price yet. Valfaris is a heavy metal themed run and gun title with some very light roguelike elements that make it play more like a new game plus mode. While the game is very gross and gory, it has some of the best pixel art I've ever seen. You can pick up Valfaris while it's 42% off for $14.49. This week's deals were tough because we had three weeks of a ton of deals and most of them expire on May 25th right after this podcast will go live, so I didn't include any of them, but that leads me to believe that we're going to see a bunch of new sales next week. What are you picking up? Are you checking out some of these deals or digging into some of the incredible releases from this week? Let me know on Twitter at Nindy Nation. Otherwise, that brings us to the end of this week's episode of Nindy Nation. Remember, you can find every episode of this podcast on the Nindy Nation YouTube channel, complete with footage of every game covered, and there's a bunch more on the channel as well, including Let's Plays and our Nindies We Love series that focuses on a few games at a time that are keeping our Joy-Cons synced. Don't forget to like the videos, subscribe if you haven't, and share everything Nindy Nation with your friends so that we can spread the love of indies on the Switch together. And for everything else Nintendo related, go hang out with our friends at the Nintendo Village where they are posting daily news and feature articles, reviews, weekly videos on their YouTube channel, and a handful of wonderful podcasts right alongside Nindy Nation. You can find everything they make at the nintendovillage.com and we are forever grateful for their support in making Nindy Nation possible. And now my friends, it's time to go work on some more content. We've got a video for What the Golf coming soon, some content I'm really excited for around Shantae and the Seven Sirens, and another Nindies We Love video all in the works, so stay tuned on Twitter and YouTube to know as soon as they go live. You can find the audio podcast on all of your favorite podcast services every Sunday night, with the video on Monday, and other videos, you know, whenever I get around to them. There's yet another fantastic list already building for next week, and I'm sure we'll see a brand new batch of deals to discuss, but that's all for next week. So until then, I'm Jeff, this has been Nindy Nation episode 66, and with so many titles hitting the eShop and so many deals to dig through, we look forward to being right here every week to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced.